Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Miss Estrick. This session is going to be on the structures within the human heart. So if you want to get a piece of paper to make notes as you go, make sure you've got that and a pen. So first of all, we've got the cardiac muscle and this is what the heart is made of. Now the cardiac muscle is found within the layers of the walls of the heart and they have quite thick layers, although the thickness does vary between the different chambers and we'll come on to that. You only find cardiac muscle in the heart and it has some unique properties. The first one is it can be described as being myogenic and what that means is that muscle can contract and relax without any input from the nervous system or hormones. So if you actually take the heart out of the body, as long as you were to supply it with oxygen and glucose, the cardiac muscle will still contract and relax, even though it's not in the body anymore, because it doesn't require any stimulation from the nervous system or hormones. The second unique property is it doesn't fatigue. And that is as long as it has glucose and oxygen. And what we mean by that is, if you try and imagine how many press-ups you are able to do, there's going to be a point when you can't do any more press-ups. And that is because the muscle surrounding your skeleton or skeletal muscle does fatigue. And that means your muscles just can't contract and relax anymore and you have to stop. That never happens to cardiac muscle as long as you have oxygen and as long as you have glucose. So that's why your heart will have been beating your entire life without you even thinking about it or any nervous um, stimulation causing it to happen. And it's never fatigued. So next thing, coronary arteries. These are the blood vessels that are surrounding the heart and they supply the cardiac muscle with this oxygenated blood to make sure they never fatigue. So the coronary arteries, we can see here that they are branching off from the aorta. So we've got one branching off this side and one branching off the other side, which you can't quite see um, the part behind this blood vessel. And it branches further all the way down so all of the cardiac muscle is supplied with oxygenated blood. So that's how the cardiac muscle receives its oxygenated blood. However, you might have heard of myocardial infarction or a heart attack. And that is caused by blockages in these coronary arteries. Because if you do have a blockage in these arteries, that will mean that oxygenated blood won't be being supplied to the cardiac muscle and eventually they won't be able to respire and that will cause the cardiac muscles in that region to die and your heart will stop beating. And that's what a heart attack is. So we're going to go through all of these structures which are labelled on the heart, but a section at a time, and I'll go through some tips to help you to remember the different names, as well as explaining what the structural functions are. So we'll start with the four chambers, and the chambers are the four regions where the blood flows into. And there's two atria, and these are the top chambers. We have a left and right atrium. And then we have the ventricles. These are the two bottom chambers, again, left and right. Now, what you might have noticed on the diagram is this side is labelled as the right. This side is labelled as the left. And that is the opposite to what it looks like. And it's because when we label a picture of the heart, we are imagining that the heart is actually on us. So if you were to pick up that picture, place it against your heart and look down, that would actually be on the left side of your body and that would be on the right side of your body. So just bear that in mind. So some features then of these atria. The walls are shown in yellow here and we can see we have a much, much thinner wall and it is a muscular wall, it's made of a cardiac muscle. The walls are much thinner in the atria compared to the muscular walls of the ventricles. They also have elastic within them, and that's so they can stretch as the blood moves in. Now, they don't need much muscle because they only need to be able to contract to push the blood down into the ventricles, which is a very short distance, and it's going down with gravity. In contrast, the ventricles, we can see they have much, much thicker muscular walls, and that's because those muscles need to be able to contract with greater force so it needs to be able to push the blood out at higher pressure because it's going further distance against gravity. 
So the right ventricle is going to be pumping blood to the lungs and the left ventricle is going to be pumping blood all the way around the body. So we're going to look at those two ventricles in a bit more detail. The right ventricle has a thinner muscular wall compared to the left ventricle. The reason for that is we said that the right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs and we don't want a very, very high pressure of blood in the lungs for two reasons. Number one, if blood did go through the lungs at high pressure, it could damage the capillaries in the lungs. The second reason is if it's at a slightly lower pressure, the blood will be moving at a slower speed. And that's good because it means there'll be more time for gas exchange. So more time for oxygen to diffuse into the blood and carbon dioxide to diffuse out. So in comparison, the left ventricle has a thicker muscular wall, and that's because it needs to be able to contract with the highest force to pump the blood out at the highest pressure. And that's because the blood after leaving the left ventricle is going to the rest of the body. So that's why it has a much thicker muscular wall for large contractions to create the higher pressure to ensure that the blood does get to all of the cells in the body. So next then, we're going to have a look at the four major blood vessels. Now, I've got more than four things highlighted here, but that's because some of the blood vessels you have entering from the left and the right-hand side. So we've got the aorta, which is this major blood vessel, the artery coming out. We have the left pulmonary artery, and we have the right pulmonary artery, right pulmonary vein, and we've got the left pulmonary vein here. It's not highlighted, but there is the left pulmonary vein. And the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. So the inferior is bringing blood from the body um, below the heart going in. Superior vena cava is bringing blood from the body, which would be above the heart. But let's have a look at those four in more detail. So there's two veins, and veins are the blood vessels which bring blood into the heart. So the way to remember that is veins have the word in within them. So veins bring blood into the heart. And the two veins that we have are the vena cava and the pulmonary vein. Vena cava, vena means vein, cava means body. So that might help you to remember it. It's the body vein. And it carries the deoxygenated blood from the body back into the heart vein, so going into the heart, via the right atrium. The pulmonary vein is carrying oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left um, atrium. Now, vein, we said um, in, it's always carrying blood in. Whenever you see the word pulmonary, that means it's a blood vessel that is attached to the lungs. So as soon as you see pulmonary, you know it is attached to the lungs. So this is attached to the lungs and it's a vein. It's carrying blood from the lungs into the heart. So then we have our two arteries and arteries begin with A, A away. So it's carrying blood away from the heart. We have the pulmonary artery and that, as we said, pulmonary always means it's attached to the lungs. And if it's A away, it's an artery, it's carrying blood away from the heart to the lungs. So that will be carrying the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle, carrying it to the lungs to become oxygenated. And then lastly, the aorta. And the aorta is carrying oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to the rest of the body. So those are now the four major blood vessels. Next, we're going to have a look at the valves. And there's two key sets of valves within the heart. We have the semilunar valves. And these are found in the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. So they're found between the ventricles and the arteries. Atrioventricular valves, the name is a hint. So they're found between the atrium and the ventricles. And that's what we can see here are atrioventricular valves between the atrium and the ventricle. Sometimes they're given two different names. So you might see them called the bicuspid or mitral and the tricuspid valves. The reason for that is um, it's a description of the number of flaps that make up the valve. So on the left side, you have the bicuspid valve, and on the right side of the heart, you have the tricuspid. 
And just to show you that in a bit more detail, so the bicuspid is made up of two flaps which form the valve. Tricuspid, tri meaning three, you've got three flaps making up that valve. So those are the atrioventricular valves. The semilunar valves are found in the arteries, so we find it within the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So what we mean by um, the valves, what the function of the valves are, they make sure blood flows in one direction. And the reason that's possible is valves will only open if there is a higher pressure from behind. And they'll close when there's a higher pressure in front. So I often say, think about a hinged door. If you push it from behind, the door opens. If you push it from the front, the door shuts. And that then means that the blood is only going to flow in one direction or unidirectional. So it prevents the blood from flowing back in the wrong direction. Last structure I'm just going to talk about is the septum. And this is a piece of cardiac muscle that runs all the way down the middle, separating the left and the right side of the heart. So it separates the oxygenated blood from the deoxygenated blood. The reason that's important is it means the oxygenated blood isn't being diluted by the deoxygenated blood. So you should have a very, very high concentration of oxygen within the oxygenated blood. And that maintains that concentration gradient when the blood reaches respiring cells. So oxygen can diffuse from the blood to the respiring cells. So that's why the septum is so important to make sure you do have this highly oxygenated blood on the left hand side. So in summary, we said there's four key chambers. You have the left and the right atrium and the left and the right ventricles. There's four major blood vessels attached to the heart, the aorta, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, and the vena cava. The coronary arteries are the arteries that are on the outside of the heart, and they supply the cardiac muscle with oxygenated blood. And there's two sets of valves within the heart, the atrioventricular valve and the semilunar valves. So that's it for the heart structure. To find out about the cardiac cycle, click on the link on the end screen. And if you want to test your knowledge, then head over to missestrick.com for questions on that. If you found today's video helpful, please give it a like and thumbs up below.